Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal and I welcome you to this session for RBI 2023. Recently, the Monetary Policy Committee was held and Reserve Bank of India came out with a statement along with various developmental and various other financial new steps that have been taken. We will be talking about this Monetary Policy Committee statement which has recently been released. I am expecting some of the other question either directly or indirectly either in phase one or in phase two or in interview from this monetary policy statement along with the next one. These two are one of the most important statements for this examination of this year. So let us start with this statement. I've already created this summarized document and through this document, I will be telling you a lot of things about monetary policy committee statement. Now this statement, this uh, document is also available in RBA 247. So you can refer to this as well. Let us start. Number one, this is the statement for June 2023, Jesse Apne Pardia The meeting was held from June 6th to June 8th, 2023. Ye din ki meeting hui thi. June 6th to June 8th. The time period is not very important, so I would not uh, you know focus too much upon it. Let's move forward. One second. Let me just get used to this. In this bi-monthly monetary policy statement of 2023-24, I hope you understand by now the meaning of bi-monthly monetary policy statement. If you don't, please read about it. I don't want to be discussing it right here because we are very close to the examination and we should not be doing it. Projections kya hai? What has the monetary policy committee projected? Let's talk about that. Number one, GDP 6.5%, the previous estimate which was held two months back, bi-monthly, that is the meaning was also 6.5%, so it has been kept the same. Number two, CPI, because one of the major targets of the Monetary Policy Committee is what is inflation targeting. Now, these are the two major tasks that the Monetary Policy Committee has. Number one, inflation targeting, and number two, ensuring that the growth stays in the range where it is expected to be. Now. RBI, of course, is not the only authority which is responsible for growth. It is the government which is more responsible for growth. But it is also in the interest of RBI as the central bank of the country to ensure that the growth is in its range, in its optimal range. And if not, whatever the banking system and the financial system can do, that RBI also has to keep in mind. That is why the projections are provided not only for inflation, but also for growth. So CPI based inflation 5.1%, it has been reduced from 5.2%. There can be questions in the interview, why has it been reduced? There can be questions in phase uh, two or phase one, in fact, even that, as to what is the latest estimate of RBI's MPC on inflation. So there can be questions around that. Okay. Foreign exchange reserves stand at 595 billion, which is almost equivalent to the previous estimate about uh, less by about six seven billion dollars not a cause for worry because uh, we've been doing well in foreign exchange reserves for quite some time what are the decisions that have been taken by rbi the broad decisions and then we will talk about sectoral or sector wise decisions and steps on the basis of assessment of current and evolving macroeconomic situation mpc ne kya bola hai number one Policy repo rate has been kept unchanged at 6.5%. I hope you know the meaning of policy repo rate or repo rate. It is the rate at which banks borrow from RBI and the opposite is reverse repo rate at which RBI borrows from banks or banks lend to RBI. A new kind of reverse repo rate called as standing deposit facility rate has been launched by RBI some time back and which this stands at 6.25%. So we've already talked about standing deposit facility rate in the past videos of RBA 247 as well. So I will not delve Marginal standing facility, the numbers are important. All these numbers are very, very important. Uh, one stock, you know, outlier that you will see here is fixed reverse repo rate. This is 3.35%, whereas the repo rate is 6.5%. So they can ask you in the interview and in phase two, what is the reason of such a wide gap between these two? It's very simple. This is almost dormant now because the place of fixed reverse repo rate has now been taken by standing deposit facility rate. The rate at which RBI borrows from banks or banks lend to RBI, one and the same thing. The bank rate and marginal standing facility rate now stand the same. There used to be some variation some time back. 
bank rate used to be higher than marginal standing facility because this was lending done for or borrowing done for a longer time period. Now they both of them stand at the same place. Okay. SDF 6.25% unchanged. MSF bank rate 6.75%. Many of reasons bata diye hain. What exactly are they and what can we infer from their movements or their recent numbers? Reverse repo rate 3.35%. Very big gap. This means banks are not using it. Even RBI is not using it. So it will ultimately die down and people will stop using it. Okay. MPC is also decided to remain focused on withdrawal of accommodation to ensure that inflation aligns with the target while supporting growth. Now, slowly and steadily, they are withdrawing accommodation, which uh, means that they're trying to uh, leave the market to its own so that whatever fall in inflation they have now witnessed because of their steps, now that, you know, stays the same for a while or goes in the same direction for a while does not reverse if it starts reversing again then they will reintroduce accommodation so they've started to withdraw accommodation in order to ensure that the market uh, starts functioning on its own the rbi is withdrawing its intervention from the market so to say okay what was the intervention for very simple inflation had been going up they intervened in order to control inflation and bring it back to the target what was the target four percent plus minus 2%. That is the range that they have. So now because the inflation is within the range, they're withdrawing that accommodation to ensure that the market uh, is left on its own and they can maintain inflation within this range. Okay. These decisions are in consonance with RBS objective of achieving the medium term target, which I have told you, CPI ka 4% plus minus 2%. That is the range that they have. I hope this is clear. Rationale, the main considerations underlining MPC's decision, QEA decision liya gaya hai, why have they left the uh, CPI inflation target unchanged at, uh, uh, and at the same time, why have they not done anything about accommodative stance or any other stance? Why are they sticking to the old stance that they took two months back? What is the main central reason behind this? That we are going to talk about here very briefly. Number one, the pace of global economic activities expected to decelerate, dragged down by elevated inflation, tight financial conditions and geopolitical tensions. Number one, at the global front, I will briefly tell you briefly, then we will discuss this. At the global front, we expect the markets to go down, the inflation to go up further and everything to go in the wrong direction. However, in the domestic segment, we expect things to improve. And because domestically we are improving, we are witnessing positive changes consistently. Keeping this in mind, RBI says instead of tightening the economy further, because of which our domestic economy might in fact start going down, let's leave the market on its own. Let's not do anything about the market. Let's not try and intervene in the market. Let's withdraw our accommodative stance so that at least the domestic economy can pick up or whatever pace it already has, it can maintain this pace. That is the objective of taking this decision behind taking this decision. I hope now it is very clear. So if anybody asks you and you say this, bang on, nobody is going to question you further. Okay, global economy. MPC says that yes, global economic activity is expected to go down further. Inflation is expected to go even further up or might stay at the same level, the financial conditions will be tight and geopolitical tensions like the war going on might continue. However, the domestic economy will record something better. GDP growth 7.2% expected in 2022, recorded a GDP growth in 2022-23 of 7.2%, which is very, very good comparative to the global scenario. In 23-24, what are the expectations or projections? Domestic demand is expected to stay up because of consumption as well as investment. Our domestic economy, ki, as always, consumption has been high. Now, investment is also expected to remain high or to even go further up because of various reasons. Uske baare mein dheere dheere baat Urban demand. So, what are the two major factors that determine the movement, overall movement, GDP, inflation, etc., etc., of an economy? It's these two things, consumption and investment. 
because if these two are up automatically the banking system will move the financial sector will move the government will be able to move further because as we consume we spend and how are we consuming because we have more incomes that is how we are able to consume that means more taxes for the government more taxes for the government automatically means more investment by the government as well more spendings by the government as well more investments by the private sector automatically means the banking sector is going to do well the financial sector is going to do well because they're investing they're investing which means somebody is also borrowing so this automatically means the private sector is going through a good virtuous cycle so consumption and investment these two are the major drivers or we can see measures uh, through which we can we can check whether an economy is going to do well or doing well or not okay next what are the various methods or measures through which we can say or we can conclude this number one urban demands remains resilient rural demand is on a revival path urban demand already high here rural demand is increasing automatically this means more consumption and more investment non-food bank credit bank credit in the non-food category is in the double digit growth matlab pichli saal 100 rupe diya tha non-food bank credit this year you're giving uh, a non-food bank credit of 115 rupees so the growth is very good in the non-food bank credit category which also means good investments because our investments in non-food bank credit especially in manufacturing have always been low been high in service been high in uh, food but not so high in manufacturing this is increasing here which is a good sign for the economy increase in the flow of resources to the commercial sector from 1 lakh crore to 2.7 lakh crore resources jo hai wo commercial sector ki taraf ja rahe hain which is a good thing because they are going to invest they are not just going to consume robust government capital expenditure which means more investment and manufacturing activity the government is spending very heavily government is very willing to spend okay so that is a very good sign ha huh. narrowing trade deficit uh, trade deficit due to contraction in merchandise imports and sustained and strong growth in service exports now this is something that the mpc says this is something that everybody is saying but there are certain criticisms also if you've been on linkedin recently and talked he heard about uh, dr raghuram rajan's new article new research on this then you would be aware as to what am i saying so let me briefly explain to you why this is controversial the government says and the mpc says rbi says there is a contraction in merchandise imports which means our net export might be going up might be on the path uh, to an upward trend because our service exports are already going up as always at the same time our merchandise imports are going down yes this is happening but at the same time dr rajan says that there is a worrisome trend that is growing not completely worrisome but we need to keep it in mind he says that india is showing uh, the indian uh, numbers and all these things are showing that our overall exports in manufacturing has gone up our overall exports in manufacturing are going up okay especially manufacturing exports of the telecom system mobile market that is the core area so they are going up according to the government but at the same time we are not making these mobiles and exporting them we are assembling these mobiles and exporting them and why so many companies are assembling these and exporting them because the government launched pli scheme recently when it did so a lot of companies took advantage by importing components assembling them and then exporting them now this has shown some positive feedback also why and how because because these components are being assembled here and then exported their prices are reduced which means the consumption in india has also increased this is a good trend more people have mobile phones in their hands automatically they're going to use the internet they're going to do things with them educate themselves do a lot of things positive things as well but at the same time because we are still importing a lot of these components our overall imports have also increased okay so although rbi has just talked about contraction in merchandise imports and growth in service exports this is something that dr rajan also talked about and i think we should be aware about it even if we are not writing it down anywhere uh, we should be aware about it because it can be a point of discussion in the interview as well okay
For understanding also, I think it's a very important point. On the supply side, PMI for manufacturing exhibited sustained expansion. What is purchasing managers index? This is the index which tells us whether we are manufacturing more or not. If you are manufacturing more, automatically PLI will, PMI will go up. Uh, and that has happened on the supply side according to RBI. Okay. Twin balance sheets of banks as well as corporates are healthy. Uh, what do you mean by twin, by twin balance sheets? Banks ki balance sheet mein kya hota hai? Their lending. That is their major asset, right? If that lending goes NPA, goes non-performing, automatically the balance sheet of banks becomes stressed. Now this is healthy, number one. Second is corporates. They are borrowing. It is their liabilities. If they're not able to repay their borrowings, then these liabilities go bad. Automatically, their balance sheet becomes stressed. Now, this is also good. Corporates are able to borrow and they are able to pay it back. So this means the twin balance sheets of banks as well as corporates is healthy. Banks are able to lend and re get it back. Corporates are able to borrow and pay it back. Okay. Supply chain normalization. COVID versus Joby supply chain may issues. I say even after that, uh, you must have heard about the problem if in um, microchips that also is reducing now and declining uncertainty makes capital expenditure cycle favorable. Now, when when the supply side becomes more uh, predictable, at the same time, there is less uncertainty in the market, capital expenditure increases. What does this mean? Think about it from a normal small business enterprise or a startup. Let's say you want to start something new, you want to set up a manufacturing plant for let's say solar panels very trendy nowadays and you know that it is going to take a capital expenditure of let's say five crores you want to do it capital expenditure is good uh, you've already received a loan of uh, pre-approval from the bank and you want to do it but there's a lot of uncertainty in the market okay today the price is xyz tomorrow it falls down immediately because of import from china then the government uh, puts restriction on chinese import for 10 days automatically the price shoots up or your sales starts going up. So you're witnessing a lot of uncertainty because of which you don't know whether you want to make that investment or not. So this uncertainty when it reduces because of whether the market or the policy of the government or XYZ, then the capital expenditure starts increasing. You would invest automatically if you see more certainty, more stability in the market of solar panels. Otherwise, you will think to do something else. Okay. So this is what they mean when they say capex cycle becomes favorable. However, headwinds from weak external demand, volatility in global financial markets. So all these are problems. External demand is less, global demand is reducing because of more uh, inflation pressure globally and at the same time the growth is reducing at the global front. Therefore, if inflation is higher, growth is less, they are going to demand less. Okay. So growth, uh, external demand is reducing. Global financial markets are more volatile, geopolitical tensions, the wars going on, intensity of El Nino impact, the monsoon issues that we've been facing, we've been talking about that monsoon might be affect, affected because of El Nino. All of these pose risks to growth outlook. These are the risks that exist even now. So they talked about these risks as well. 2023-24 May, what is the growth uh, projection? 6.5%. This is important. Please remember it can be asked in the examination. Now we will talk about sector wise analysis. Mein. Inflation mein RBI ne kya bola hai? and then we will talk about other sectors as well. Due to monetary policy tightening and supply side measures, CPI inflation jo hai, wo kam ho gaya hai, to 4.7%. Easing across food, fuel and core categories. Sub categories mein niche gaya hai, that is a good thing. Food inflation 4.2%, core inflation 5.1%. I hope you know the uh, you know, classification under core inflation, uske andar kya kya aata hai. food, agar core mein food bhi dal denge, it becomes headline along with that. If you also add the masala of fuel, to food plus core plus fuel becomes headline inflation. Uh, ye mein already aapko alag se padha chuka hoon, RBA 247 mein you've been reading about it, so I'm not going to repeat it. Near term inflation outlook jo hai, wo kafi favorable hai, uh, because we've been uh, immune to adverse weather events, especially the Rabi crop of 2023, jo abhi harvest hui hai kuch time pehle, that has not seen a lot of impact. But the Kharif is expected to witness some impact because of uh, incoming of El Nino. Okay, that we will see, we will witness that. Or wo October, November. Tak
मॉनसून की वजह से वी माइट सी दैट इज वॉट इट वी माइट सी एन अपवर्ड मूवमेंट इन इन्फ्लेशन इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव सिक्स मंथ इन्फ्लेशन का प्रोजेक्शन क्या है 2023-24 का 5.1 परसेंट डिसेंट इनफ कंसिडरिंग ग्लोबल सिचुएशन क्या है लेट्स कम टू व्हाट आरबीआई बी इज इन एम अबाउट लिक्विडिटी एंड फाइनेंशियल मार्केट कंडीशन इन दोनों में क्या कंडीशन है और क्या हमारे टारगेट्स वगैरह हैं सोप्लस लिक्विडिटी इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री सम surplus liquidity 2.9 lakh crore now what is this liquidity when we say surplus liquidity it is the liquidity with the entire banking system to jo bhi banking system hai uske paas jo bhi liquidity hai usko hum bolte hain system liquidity ya fir surplus liquidity okay to system liquidity was in surplus in 2022 23 at 2.9 lakh crore in 23 24 system liquidity jo hai wo kam ho gayi hai come down to 1. 7 lakh crore during April to May 2023. अब इसके रीजंस क्या हैं? ये बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है इसको कवर करने में मजा आएगा नंबर वन मेच्योरिंग ऑफ टारगेटेड लॉन्ग टर्म रेपो ऑपरेशन आपको ये तो पता ही होगा लॉन्ग टर्म रेपो ऑपरेशन क्या होते हैं वेन यू आर बोरोइंग फ्रॉम आरबीआई फॉर अ लॉन्गर टर्म दैट इज एल टी आर ओ लॉन्ग टर्म रेपो ऑपरेशन मेच्योरिंग मतलब यू बोरोड फ्रॉम आरबीआई Now RBI is going to give it back. Uh, now RBI is going to demand it back from you. आपने borrow किया था RBI से अब आपको pay back करना है. When you have to pay back, automatically system liquidity कम हो जाएगी because what is system liquidity? Liquidity with the banking system. The banking system is paying it back to RBI. Automatically system liquidity goes down. Seasonal expansion in currency in circulation. Circulation में जो भी currency थी, if it increases, which means more currency with the public. automatically this means less currency less money with the banks this means system liquidity goes down build up of government cash balance same jaise logo ke paas paisa tha waise hi the government might also have cash balance if the government has cash balance automatically this means this means what this means less money with the banks less money with the banks system liquidity goes down yahan tak clear hai aage chale In the third week of May, there was an expansion in system liquidity. System liquidity फिर से बढ़ गई क्यों बढ़ गई Number वन currency in circulation went down. Why? Because of 2000 थाउजेंड बैंक नोट बैंक नोट जो थे वो बैंक में वापस आने लगे सिस्टम लिक्विडिटी ऑटोमेटिकली इंक्रीज पिकअप इन गवर्नमेंट स्पेंडिंग गवर्नमेंट की स्पेंडिंग बड़ी है ऑटोमेटिकली वॉट इज गोन टू हैपन द गवर्नमेंट स्पेंड द मनी गोज टू द पीपल और द बैंक इफ द मनी गोज टू द पीपल दे डिपॉजिटेड इन द बैंक्स और दे इन्वेस्ट Ultimately gets in the hands of banks or financial system. So ultimately, वो घूम फिर के पैसा बैंक के पास आ गया सिस्टम में डिपॉजिट हो गया किसी तरह से सो सिस्टम लिक्विडिटी इंक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सो दिस इज वॉट इज हैपन्ड इन लिक्विडिटी सिस्टम एंड लिक्विडिटी सेक्टर ऑफ आर इकोनॉमी एक्सटर्नल सेक्टर में क्या हुआ है हमारा टारगेट है यूएस वन ट्रिलियन मर्चेंडाइज एक्सपोर्ट बाई ट्वेंटी थर्टी ये हम किस तरह से करेंगे ये सारे बहुत बेसिक से पॉइंट्स हैं Now, if you diversify automatically, you're going to be able to export more. Diversification of both markets as well as products. Diversification of market मतलब आप you're able to export not only to Bangladesh और Bangladesh को छोड़ दो not only to Europe but also to US, also to Latin America, also to Turkey, also to Philippines, also to something like Australia. so if you are able to diversify your market automatically your exports exports become more stable and at the same time they increase also okay as well as diversification of products aap khali shirt nahi logo ko de rahe ho export kar rahe ho aap trouser bhi export kar pa rahe ho banyan bhi export kar pa rahe ho you are able to export bandanas also you are able to export lungi also whatever so as soon as you are able to diversify into different products also your market becomes more stable and your exports also increase लेवरेजिंग फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट अभी ऑस्ट्रेलिया गए थे क्यों गए थे ऑस्ट्रेलिया गए थे जिससे कि हमारा फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट जो ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट करता है इट एक्सपैंड फर्दर ज्यादा से ज्यादा प्रोडक्ट हम उसमें डाल पाए सो देट वी कैन एक्सपोर्ट मोर एंड मोर टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया सो लेवरेजिंग और स्ट्रेंथनिंग फ्री ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट दैट कैन ऑल्सो हेल्प अस रीच दिस टारगेट इन दी एक्सटर्नल सेक्टर ओके स्ट्रेंथनिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कैपेसिटी एंड कॉम्पिटेटिवनेस बाई पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन वैल्यू चेंज <laughs> जितना ज्यादा आपकी वैल्यू चेन स्ट्रॉन्ग होगी उतनी ज्यादा आपकी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग स्ट्रॉन्ग होगी वैल्यू चेन का एग्जांपल यू आर एबल टू इंपोर्ट कंपोनेंट्स फॉर मोबाइल फोन्स असेंबल देम इन इंडिया एंड एक्सपोर्ट देम बैक टू द सेम कंट्री प्रोबेबली 
so that is a strong value chain okay through schemes such as pli across sectors pli is not right now in all the sectors if it becomes uh, cross sectoral har sector mein agar pli scheme aa jayegi automatically we will see more sectors coming up automatically more sectors come up more exports in different from different sectors the entire export target of india can be achieved okay valuable support is being provided to india's external sector by service exports and remittances ye hame abhi dikh raha hai service exports hamare bahut high hain remittances are very high so that support is being provided to india's external sector service exports grew at 27.9% pucha ja sakta hai exam mein please remember this merchandise exports grew at only 6.9% compared to service exports aap dekh sakte ho ki hamara merchandise export jo hai wo uska jo growth hai wo kitna kam hai okay there has been a significant net fpi inflow net fpi inflow matlab foreign portfolio investment ka jo jitna paisa country mein aa raha hai versus whatever is going out the net effect is positive to net effect jo hai hamara positive raha hai 2020 324 mein indian rupees also remained stable since january 2023 not nothing to talk about here external sector hamara resilient hai foreign exchange reserves to that a comfortable 595 billion ye hum dekh chuke hain already next meeting august 8 to 10th ki hogi not very important members of mpc i don't think this is something that we should be talking about koi zarurat nahi hai iske bare mein baat karne ki yes statement on development and regulatory policies isme teen cheeze hain financial market regulation and payment system in teenon ke bare mein i think baat kar li jaye to acha rahega we should be talking about this financial market pehle then regulation and then payment systems when we talk about financial market number 1 borrowing in call and notice money market by scheduled commercial banks now scheduled commercial banks uh, borrow uh, in the interbank market matlab wo ek dusre se borrow karte hain they also lend to each other in the interbank market wo ek dusre ko lend bhi karte hain this is called as call and notice money market okay so scheduled commercial banks are involved in borrowing and lending to each other what has the rbi said now greater flexibility for managing money market borrowings mpc says that scheduled commercial banks can set their own limits for borrowing and call and notice money market now rbi used to set limit for banks ki bhai aap itna borrow kar sakte ho itna lend kar sakte ho daily basis pe weekly basis pe monthly basis pe whatever whatever now rbi says the banks have the flexibility to decide their own borrowings and lendings अब उसका पीरियड कितना होगा वो अभी पता नहीं है वो पता लग जाएगा कुछ दिनों में बट देव डिसाइडेड दैट नाउ वी विल प्रोवाइड मोर फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी सो दैट द बैंक्स हैव द एबिलिटी टू टेक देयर ओन डिसीजंस व्हाट शुड बी देयर लिमिट ऑफ बोरोइंग एंड लेंडिंग व्हिच इज अ गुड स्टेप ओके सो दिस इज समथिंग न्यू इन रेगुलेशन व्हाट इज हैपन प्रोडेंशियल फ्रेमवर्क फॉर स्ट्रेस एसेट्स रेगुलेशन मतलब बेसिकली हमारा फोकस है एनपीएस कम करने पे स्ट्रेस एसेट्स आर व्हाट एनपीएस so a more stronger framework for stressed assets is now being created already hum log kafi kuch kar chuke hain stressed assets remove karne hai kam karne ke upar so prudential framework for resolution of stressed assets to harmonize regulated entities usne do ye major steps liye number 1 comprehensive regulatory framework governing compromise settlement and technical right of covering all regulated entities jo bhi compromise settlement hote the matlab मैं एक बैंक हूं आई हैव गिवन मनी टू सम इंडिविजुअल एंड दैट पर्सन इज नॉट पेइंग मी बैक एंड नाउ आई वांट टू सेटल विद दैट इंडिविजुअल क्योंकि पैसा बहुत ज्यादा है कॉम्प्रोमाइज सेटलमेंट ठीक है ना या फिर टेक्निकल राइट ऑफ होने वाला है कि अभी पैसा वापस नहीं मिलेगा राइट ऑफ कर देते हैं उसमें जो भी रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क है उसको बहुत ज्यादा दे वॉन्ट टू मेक इट मोर कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव नाउ दे वॉन्ट टू मेक इट मोर लेट से सपोर्टिव ऑफ द बैंकिंग सिस्टम एज वेल एज द इंडिविजुअल्स और द बोरोवर्स जिससे कि जल्दी से जल्दी वो पैसा रिकवर हो पाए कॉम्प्रोमाइज सेटलमेंट हो पाए रैशनलाइज द एग्जिस्टिंग नॉर्म्स फॉर इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ रेजोल्यूशन प्लान फॉर एक्सपोजर्स अफेक्टेड बाय नेचुरल कलामिटी स्पेशली दे फोकस्ड ऑन नेचुरल कलामिटीज बिकॉज दिस माइट हैपन इन द नेक्स्ट थ्री फोर मंथ्स बिकॉज ऑफ एल नीनो सो इन एडवांस दे सेंग वट एवर राइट ऑफ इज गोट टू हैपन थ्रू नेचुरल कलामिटीज और बिकॉज ऑफ नेचुरल कलामिटीज वी वॉन्ट टू हैव मोर रैशनल रेजोल्यूशन प्लान फॉर दैट ज्यादा एक रैशनल रेजोल्यूशन प्लान बनाना है जिससे कि ना ही बैंक सफर करे एंड एट द सेम टाइम द इंडिविजुअल और द फार्मर्स आल्सो डोंट सफर ओके नेक्स्ट डिफॉल्ट लॉस गारंटी अरेंजमेंट इन डिजिटल लेंडिंग अगर इनोवेशन और रिस्क मैनेजमेंट के बीच में बैलेंस क्रिएट करना है 
Now, what is digital lending? A kind of lending where you as a borrower do not have to go to the bank. Aapne online apply kiya. Let's say you have the app of Cred. Aapne Cred pe apply kiya. I want to take a loan. Cred talks to a bank. The bank approves. Uh, Cred gives all the paperwork to the bank. The bank approves the loan. Cred tells you that, okay, the loan is approved. You can take it from us. The bank gives it to Cred. Cred gives it to you. Now, if you default, then the bank should have some kind of protection. Cred provides that protection. This is the intermediary between bank and you. Cred says we are going to give some guarantee, 30%, 40%. If this individual uh, does not give it back, becomes a NPA, then we are going to give you 40% of whatever is remaining, for example. Okay. So this is called as loss guarantee. Loss guarantee arrangement is called loss guarantee. So RBI is saying, let's come out with certain norms so that this loss guarantee arrangement becomes more rational at the same time becomes, uh, uh, you know, is framed in such a way that more and more such intermediaries in digital lending space can grow because bank ka bhi fayda, individuals ka bhi fayda. A working group was created in 2021 on digital lending under chairmanship of Jayant Kumar Dash. Ye pucha ja sakta hai exam mein. One of the recommendations was first loss default guarantee but RBI abhi tak usko bahut zyada implement nahi kar paayi hai but what is the idea of first loss default guarantee a credit risk sharing agreement wherein third party guarantees to compensate up to a certain percentage of default in a loan portfolio of regulated entities banks and nbfcs what is this third party cred based on extensive consultation mpc came up with the above measure so MPC is saying, let's try and rationalize this, let's try and implement this further so that digital lending can improve and increase in our economy. Third, priority sector lending target for urban cooperative banks, which has been eased out, kiya gaya hai. the implementation has been extended by another two years from 2024 to 2026. Pehle 2024 tak unko now it has been extended to 2026. And whichever urban cooperative bank has achieved it, within the time period or is bound to achieve it uh, by 2024, unko kuch incentives bhi diye jayenge for good performance. Okay, the dates you should remember, they can be asked in the examination. You all know about PSL, so I don't want to talk about that. Rationalization of licensing framework for authorized persons under FEMA. Now you all know what are authorized persons. These are the persons who are, who are licensed by RBI to exchange currency on behalf of RBI. Ki bhai, abhi ko as an individual I want to go to Australia, I want to go to the US for a trip. So I authorized person ke paas Usse main foreign exchange. Karwaunga. It can be an individual, it can be an entity. <coughs> Normally, entity individual ko dega RBI. Normally, these are companies. It can be bank, it can be a non-banking entity as well. Okay. So authorized uh, jo persons have license diya jata, they are licensed by RBI. NPC has decided to simplify and rationalize the licensing framework. This is zada se zada. more and more entities can get the license of being authorized persons. They can come under FEMA and they can try and increase remittance activity, try and increase the inflow and outflow of foreign exchange in our economy. Okay. Objective is to achieve operational efficiency in delivery of forex facility. Jitna se zada operational efficiency usme create karta hai. Payment systems mein. E rupee, BBPS, ye dono mein major changes kiye gaye hain. To E rupee white vouchers, I am sure you must have already read about them through RBI 247. Fir se bata dete hain ek bar. MPC has decided to expand the scope and reach of E rupee voucher. Number one, non-bank prepaid payment instrument issuers can now issue E rupee vouchers. Issuance of E rupee vouchers on behalf of individuals as well. Pehle corporates and governments could only issue e-rupee vouchers. Now, what are these e-rupee vouchers? Let us take an example of, let's say scholarships. Let's say I as an individual enter college and I get a scholarship from UP government. UP government used to transfer money into my account and I would not, they would not know where am I spending it. With this e-rupee voucher, what would happen is I would be sent a voucher and that voucher can only be used in my college. It cannot be used anywhere else. So when uh, the UP government or the central government sends me a voucher, it can only be used against my fees in the same college, nowhere else. It, it, it can be a QR code, it can be a message, it can be anything. So that's how e-rupee voucher 
is a better method of providing scholarships. Okay. The same can happen with DBT. Instead of giving money into your account, they can give you e rupee voucher and that can only be used on that ration shop. That's how it becomes digital at the same time limited. Now, in order to provide greater flexibility, MPC has decided to permit these entities to hedge their gold price risk on recognized exchange. This is very important. This is very important. E rupee voucher. Wala. The e rupee, a digital voucher, was issued in the form of SMS or QR code, was launched in 2021, developed by NPCI, rights on UPI system. It is a person and purpose specific cashless digital payment system. Purpose specific, person specific. It is given only to me. Only I can use it. Purpose specific. I can only use it to get uh, rebate on my fees in my college. Only for scholarship purpose. Okay. It is offline. It can accessible even on basic phones. At present, it is issued by banks on behalf of central government, state government, and corporates. But now RBI is saying individuals be issue karna start kar sakte hain. So maybe let's say main live session le raha aur maine bola. जो भी इसका सही जवाब देगा उसको ई रूपी वाउचर दूंगा मैं सौ रुपए का एंड हु एवर इज द फर्स्ट वन टू गिव मी द राइट आंसर इन लाइव सेशन इमीडिएटली अ पर्सन इज सिटिंग विद मी वो आपका फोन नंबर लेगा और आपको सौ रुपए भेज देगा ई रूपी वाउचर के थ्रू सो दैट्स हाउ इट कैन बी इफेक्टिव फॉर एजुकेशनल पर्पजेज इज वेल ओके स्ट्रीम लाइनिंग भारत बिल पेमेंट सिस्टम प्रोसेस एंड मेंबरशिप क्राइटेरिया वॉट इज बीबीपीएस बेसिकली Uh, मैं चेक कर रहा था इवन आई डोंट यूज बीबीपीएस टिल नाउ आई थॉट की आर यूज करते हैं इसको बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग है व्हेन इफ यू वांट टू मेक अ लॉट ऑफ मल्टीपल रेगुलर रिकरिंग पेमेंट जैसे कि मुझे मेरा ऑफिस है मुझे ऑफिस की पेमेंट देनी है इंटरनेट चल रहा है देर आर आई थिंक फोर इंटरनेट कनेक्शन रनिंग इन माई ऑफिस प्रेजेंटली चारों की अलग अलग पेमेंट जानी है हर महीने इलेक्ट्रिसिटी वॉटर गैस ऑल दीज कनेक्शन आ देर मेरा पर्सनल फोन है उसका बिल जाना है कॉरपोरेट कंपनी का फोन है उसका बिल जाना है ऑल दीज बिल्स हैव टू बी पेड एवरी मंथ नाउ डूइंग इट मैन्युअली इट्स सच अ टीडीएस टास्क बीबीपीएस कैन टेक केयर ऑफ दैट यू कैन आल्सो डू इट थ्रू बीबीपीएस आपने एक बार डाल दिया स्टैंडिंग इंस्ट्रक्शन दे दिया ऑल दीज बेसिक बिल्स व्हिच आर स्मॉल अमाउंट बिल्स मंथ ऑन मंथ बेसिस पे जो आते हैं वो आप आराम से बीबीपीएस के थ्रू पे कर सकते हो सो इट हेल्प्स इन बेसिकली बीबीपीएस इज एन इंटरमीडिएरी व्हिच ब्रिंग्स अ लॉट ऑफ कलेक्टर्स फॉर एग्जांपल एयरटेल इज अ कलेक्टर Airtel is a retailer, let's say, or a distributor or a manufacturer. Airtel can come in and connect with the BBPS as a receiver of bill. Uh, IGL can come in, Tata Power can come in, Vodafone can come in. Now, those are all the things. Now, the customer is sitting at the top, and the customer can now pay all these bills together every month. Those are all bills together every month through BBPS. He does not have to even, you know, separately file all these bills. ऑटोमेटिकली उसके अकाउंट से वो बिल सारी कंपनीज में चले जाएंगे ओके सो हाउ दी दिस इज हाउ बीबीपीएस ब्रिंग्स टुगेदर ऑल दीज डिफरेंट इंडिविजुअल्स और कंपनीज विच आर कलेक्टिंग द बिल एंड द इंडिविजुअल्स वांट टू पे दीज बिल्स ऑनलाइन ओके सो दे वांट टू स्ट्रीम लाइन बीबीपीएस प्रोसेस एंड इंक्रीज द मेंबरशिप क्राइटेरिया मतलब इंप्रूव द मेंबरशिप क्राइटेरिया सो दैट मोर एंड मोर कंपनीज कैन कम एंड कनेक्ट so that more and more companies can come and connect with bbps and more and more people can pay more of their bills online directly internationalizing issuance and acceptance of rupee cards to rupee cards out uh, you know along with visa and mastercard they have not been able to become so popular rbi is again trying to make it more international in nature ki international issuance international acceptance rupee cards ki humko badhani hai that is what they are trying to do here okay so this is what we have about the mpc monetary policy meet which was held recently i wanted to come out with this video on 8th itself but thoda delay ho gaya because of a lot of things that are going on because of the upcoming rbi examination if you are preparing for the examination please keep preparing don't think about anything else don't think about the result keep focused on the process and if you have not started preparing till now you still have time ek mahina hai aapke paas agar aap fresher nahi ho if you already been preparing for upsc or rbi in the past or various other things and if you feel that you still want to prepare or give a uh, you know fair attempt in rbi this year then this is the time effort laga ke de sakte ho nahi bhi hua it will be a very good learning for you main aisa nahi bolunga ki mere sath chaloge to main kara dunga that is not possible 
but you have enough time to make a conscious good quality effort for the upcoming exam i'll see you again guys if you have any doubts or anything to say you can put it in the comment section below all the best take care bye bye jai hind